We're going to score each set of rudders out of 10 in different categories like pricing, build quality, centre detent, smoothness amongst a few others. Every single one of these rudders I've recommended at some point and will cover almost every flight simmer's journey no matter where you sit in terms of budget. The rudders I've picked out for this are all recommended by me so here's the list. Thrustmaster T-Flights, Logitech G-Pro, formerly SciTech, Winwing Orion with the damper mod, Verpal Ace with the damper mod, Thrustmaster TPRs, Virtual Fly Ruddos, and finally the Brunner CLSE Mac 2. If you think I've missed anything here, don't be shy, shout me out in the comments. So here's how we're going to score them. Each category will be scored out of 10, 10 being the best. Let's take pricing for example. The Thrustmaster T-Flights come in at only $130. This is amongst the cheapest. So they will be rewarded a 9 out of 10 for price. It's got nothing to do with anything other than the price and the price alone. That will be the same for each category. These are the categories that we're going to go over. Price, build quality, features, center detent, brakes, smoothness, ease of use, design, and adaptability. So each of these categories will be independently scored and we can watch as the scoring starts to build and ultimately find out which rudders are king. Okay, let's kick it off with the price. Thrustmaster T-Flights are off to a strong start here with a 9.5 coming in at just 130 US dollars. And that's followed up closely by the Logitech. Something interesting here though is the price of the one wing. It's what you might say close ish and they now hold stock in the US. So importantly those taxes and charges are taken care of so it's sitting pretty strong I'd say at 7.5. We'll run down the chart here and you can see the Brunners get just two points being that they're the most expensive on this list at a smidge over 2000 US dollars. So the T-Flights are off to a great start but there's much more to this story and there will be a few swings coming up and maybe an unexpected finish. All right, so let's get on to the build quality. What I'm looking for here is sturdiness, quality, strong materials, and attention to detail up close. So the T-Flight and the Logitech both come in at the bottom, as expected, with a two, as these are super budget options. Moving on to the middle three at seven and 7.5, and finally, the Virtual Fly Ruddos and the Brunners, both with solid nines here. Brunner almost got a 9.5, but just couldn't edge it out over the Ruddos. Now, both the Brunner and the Ruddos are some of the best build quality I've ever seen in a set of Ruddos, and certainly reflect the high price tag. So after the first two sections, we have one wing Orions sitting on top clearly beating out everything else on the chart. Let's keep going and see how things start to change. On to the features now. What I'm looking at here is what they actually provide and are there any standout extra features? T-Flights come in at the bottom with a three as they only have the basics. Logitechs have a windy mechanism thing. I can't remember what they call it, but you can adjust the tension, which is pretty cool, giving them a 4.5. The one wing and the verpals with the damper mod are pretty feature rich both with eights. And if you want to know more about those, I've got full review videos on both, so check them out. Thrustmaster TPRs more or less hold up in this region, but there's a large jump up to the Ruddo, simply for those load cell brakes, which <laughs> they're amazing. And then another large jump up to the Brunner, as these have force feedback, which in my opinion, kind of fully trumps anything in the list. Check out the full Brunner and Rudder review if you get a chance. I'll put links to all these videos in the description. It's time for one of the most important ones, at least I think it is, the center detent. For this category, I'm looking for a smooth transition over the center of the axis. Most rudders have, you could say, some sort of detent, some more than others, and this can make controlling the aircraft with minute adjustments around that middle area difficult or easy. So here we go, let's kick it off with the T-Flights. And the T-Flights get a four. For something in this price range, it's actually not that bad, but they do suffer a little bit from stickiness. Logitech coming in at a two with a fairly large detent, and then there's a very large jump to what you might call the mid-range. Each one of them, I'd say, punching well above their weight. I feel like the Verpals do edge the TPRs and the one wing Orions in terms of of that detent, but the clear winners here are the Ruddo with a 
9 and the Bronner's with a 9.5, having absolutely no detent through the middle. Both of these are an absolute dream to use through that center section, resulting in so much more subtle control. So where does that bring us? I tell you, these scores are starting to get close. You have one wing, Ruddle and Brunner all up there at the moment, closely followed by Verpo and the TPRs. Now it's highly likely some people won't agree with the scores or the scoring system. If you're one of them, shout out in the comments where you reckon I've went wrong and maybe what you would have done and scored it. Now on to the brakes, something I often think is so overlooked and there is a surprise in this one. And no, it's not the Ruddles, as they will be the clear winner with a nine. Being that they are load cells or pressure based, so completely, or you could say outright winners there. The surprise for me was the one wing. The brakes in the one wing have a bit of a dampened feel and some weight to it. And for a mid-range set of pedals, they do really well and stand out well against the other mid-range sets, even rivaling the Brunners. Now for smoothness, here I'm looking at how smooth the rudders are the entire range of deflection. How easy is it to make small adjustments? Do they stick or feel uneven and anyway. T-flights unfortunately suffer from a little bit of what people call stiction. This is where under any load, like the weight of your feet, they can sometimes just stick a little on the rails. So they start off things with a two. The Logitechs are a bump up from that, but then we take a huge leap up to the one wing Verpal and TPRs. TPRs and the Verpals are even a good match for the Ruddo and the Brunners, which is absolutely amazing. Quite incredible what Thrustmaster and Verpal have achieved here in terms of that super fluid feel throughout the entire range. So where are we sitting now with the scores? Well, the Brunners are edging the one wing Orions at the moment. You could say all the mid tier and high end rudders are starting to leave the entry level ones behind. It's probably a good time to point out that although I'm trying to be fully objective with these scores, each of these sections and categories will mean that more or less to you. I think it's all about figuring out what you most value about a good set of rudders and maybe adding a few extra points in for yourself in those sections. Now for the ease of use. Pretty much every set here is plug and play to some degree. The only thing to really mention here are the Brunners. They get the lowest score and that's simply due to their more complicated nature of being force feedback and having to switch the software between sims. There's nothing much more to say here. All the other scores are fairly level. That brings us on to the design. For the design, I'm looking at the visual aesthetics and the function that they bring. I'm not a massive fan of the T-Flights or the Logitechs. They score a reasonable six and five out of 10. The highlight here for me is the Ruddo. Looking at the design alone, they just look so strong, easily the sturdiest looking set of rudders in this collection here. And they get an impressive nine out of 10 with the authentic look. I also think the Brunner have done well here with their fully enclosed central part. But also I like the TPRs. There's just something sturdy about that central pillar where the pedals are bolted through, as well as the authentic looking pedals. So where are we now? The Virtual Fly Ruddo is leading the pack by a reasonable margin with all other high-end and mid-tier rudders not too far away, but sitting fairly level and even. The biggest surprise for me still is the one wing Orions, they're up there. And I'm not sure if I even agree myself that they should be there, but let's just keep going with the scoring and see what happens. For adaptability, I'm looking at a few things here. How well are they suited to various types of aircraft? Can they be easily mounted? and which sims are they compatible with. The Verpal and the One Wing are a standout here, as they can be used with all the sims. They're fairly easy to mount and probably the best out of all of them if you want to have them just sitting on the floor under your desk and not hard mounted. The Brunner pulls in the lowest score here just due to being only fully compatible with a few sims and the absolute need to be hard mounted. The Ruddles also score a little bit lower as they're really designed for GA flying. And I also think they need to be hard mounted for the best experience. I reckon the winner here is the Verpals. Super easy to mount. They're not bad just sitting on the floor. And the Verpal Ace variant that I have here is well suited to flying anything. All right, it's final score time. Now, before we go through this, there's some important factors to think about here. I've tried to be as objective as possible with the scoring. Some of these categories are going to be more or less important to you depending on 
what you're looking for. So here's the final scores. There's a few things that really surprised me and some of it I don't fully agree with. For example, look how the scores of the mid-range rudders are to the high-end ones. That's the one wing Verpal and TPRs. Also, there's not a massive gap in price from the mid-tier to the low-tier products. I think that's what's most impressive here. These mid-tier sets are really punching above their weight. But there's a few questions to answer here. What is the best outright? What is the best money no object? What is the best budget set? What is the best mid-tier? And if I could only have one set, which would it be? These are my personal thoughts taking into account the scoring but also adding my experiences with all the rudders that I've ever tested. The best outright rudder in my opinion would have to be between the Verpal and the Thrustmaster TPRs and that's not quite what the chart says either. These two edge it out as my favourite to take this out but if you are holding me to one then the pricing of the Verpal makes them the winner here. The Verpals with the damper mod installed combined with the price, build quality and adaptability quite amazing. If you do want to avoid the feeling of your feet rotating around through an arc and have the pedals a little bit closer together like they are in real life then the TPRs are a great pick. It stings a little more price wise but the build quality, feel and design, it's all backing up that higher price point. So the Verpals here are the outright winner. But what's the best money no object? The best money no object, in my opinion, is the Brunner. The addition of force feedback makes them impossible to beat. Match that with the build quality, it more than makes up for the added complexity of the setup and operation. If you have the money, as far as I'm concerned, these are the best you can get for that fully immersive experience. Although if you remove force feedback from the equation, because it can complicate things a little, and let's face it, flight simulators are already complicated enough. The rudders would take it out. The brakes and smoothness all the way through the axis and build quality is just up there. So money is no object, Brunners, as long as you're good with the extra effort of tinkering and calibrating, and maybe only if you fly Microsoft Flight Simulator and X-Plane. The best budget set of rudders, I think, would be the Logitechs. I have something else to say here, though. Some of the pricing is so close in the mid-tier range. If you can afford it to put an extra bit of cash towards it, the Win Wings are an excellent choice. But you really can't go wrong here with the Logitechs. The T-Flights, although quieter in operation than the Logitechs, they do suffer from a little bit of Stiction. And if you have them sitting on the floor under a desk, that rounded design at the back makes them difficult to stay put. So for me, the Logitech takes out the best budget rudders. Now, what's the best mid-tier? The Thrustmaster TPRs take it out for me here, and again, that's not what the chart says. Pendular design, the build quality, make them an absolute joy to use. Pedals do have a slightly more authentic feel to them, being that the pedals are a bit closer together, they do cost a chunk more than the Verpal and the One Wing, but I love the pendular motion and the adjustments that you can make. There will always be a place for the TPRs in my sim room. They've been around for years and I can see why they're loved by so many simmers. If I could only have one set of rudders for everything, never to buy another set again. And I've chopped and changed a little bit with this answer. I think it's a toss up between the TPRs and the Ruddo. I really agonised over this answer, but ended up picking the Ruddo just because of the bomb-proof build quality. The Ruddos are compatible with any sim as they act as a joystick or controller. The overbuilt nature of them, which I just touched on, I feel like they would last a lifetime. And in GA flying, they look and feel very authentic. You can't really lose with any of these rudders in this video. They're all great in their own way for different types of simmers and budgets. And from everything I've tried and tested over the years, the collective here is what I would call a no-brainer purchase at any level.